came into the game at number one, don't you forget, because Ben Simmons was number one draft pick. I think people forget that. We as a community wrote that whole piece of art for him. That's why the video had had a special place in my heart as well, because it spoke about something real. It didn't speak about anything that was made up. It's mental health is real, and especially after COVID, mental health is real. <laughs> Go rush! Voldy interview. Take one. Let's go. Was that, was that, was that alright? I do one more. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so Voldy, <laughs> welcome to the show. <laughs> Glad to be here, man. Thanks for having me, bro, for real. You're welcome. So, firstly, do you want to introduce yourself as an artist and yeah. tell us a little bit about your background? For sure, for sure. Um, soul hip hop artist, uh, singer as well, you know, if you may, if you may say. Um, South African born, uh, raised there as well till 16, came to Australia, so dual citizenship, we out here. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, yeah, I make music for the soul, man, you know, I make music for the soul and things that people can really touch and, and feel in their heart for real, so that's, that's me. And so you created the original soundtrack for the Ben Simmons project, We Got Your Back, Mate. Do you want to tell me about the day that I called you and first came up with the, the idea about creating a, a track? Yeah, for sure, for sure. The, the memory still lives rent-free in my head, we'll say that. Um, but I just kind of remember driving back home from work and um, getting your text message first prior, just asking if you had, if I had songs for, for a specific project you were trying to do. So sent you a couple more songs and um, yeah, you just said you wanted something a bit more personal and I just thought, you know what? I want to make something a bit more personal, so I just, you sent me a brief, I read it over, and that night, straight to the studio, called up the boys, um, Michael and Levi, and we just made something that, um, yeah, that just came together so perfectly, and I guess fit with the video very, very nicely, yeah. And so what was the process in writing the lyrics for this track? Because it's essentially a little bit different to how you would go about a, a song that you would write, you know, more about your experiences personally. Yeah, for sure, for sure, I think... Uh, I couldn't go about it the same way I write my own songs, I guess, because those are more personal to me. Um, but writing this one, I had to kind of really dig into the, the crooks and crevices about the situation, especially around Ben Simmons and just trying to figure out why would someone feel like that and how could I make a song that, that kind of just scream redemption, you know, for someone. And, and yeah, I just kind of went in and watched a bunch of his basketball games, a bunch of his interviews and stuff like that, and just try to gauge what type of person he was and, and also just try and make it relatable to me. Um, I can't say that I am a supreme athlete, but um, I, did, I did grow up playing sports, so I think that kind of pressure of not doing so well uh, when, when, when your team needs you can, can weigh on you for a long time. And big timer like Ben Simmons, like especially in the city of Philadelphia, whew, yeah, it must be, must be heavy. So yeah, I just kind of did that, did my research and just kind of got into that personality and that mode of trying to figure out, hmm, how can I, how can I write this song? And yeah, that's when the, the comeback came into my head and I just thought, yeah, you're gonna have to come back regardless, you know? So why not, why not make a song that pumps you up to come back? You know, so that's how, that's how that went. And so tell us about your background as an athlete because I mean that was one of the, the reasons why I really wanted to get you on the project too. It's not just because you're an amazing artist. <laughs> you actually have a, a background in, in sport so yeah, you, you yeah. can connect to the Ben Simmons situation. So what, what's your history in being an athlete? Uh, grew up playing soccer. Um, big soccer fan, Liverpool fan by the way. Let me throw that out there please. Um, affiliated to like die. Um, and also grew up playing other sports like basketball and Volleyball, handball, sporty guy, just, let's just say that. Um, but soccer is definitely the cream of the crop for me. And I played that at a, at a pretty high level um, in, in Australia. And that was, that was, that was cool. I had, I had scholarships to go to England, which was, which is vibes and got injured, I guess. And then that kind of led me to this journey I'm, I am on on music now. And I think it's taught me a lot of things as an athlete and just resilience and just keeping, keeping it going. And, practicing till it's till it's till it's progressive um and really just trying to yeah work on your game every time you had the chance to so um so yeah just understanding that ben, ben simmons situation from that angle was 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 important for for the song as well 
Uh, I mean, let's dig a little deeper into it. Like, did you kind of take yourself back into those moments when you were playing soccer or sport and trying to relate to potentially how Ben Simmons would be feeling in this moment? I think I think subconsciously, yes, because the only way I could have really um, connected with that kind of side of Ben Simmons, of disappointment, I guess, or just being in a place where uh, you felt like you let the city down. I think I, I had to. I had no choice but to do that. Um, and there's, I played soccer for a while, and there are moments in my my short career where things things just didn't go the way I wanted it to go, and mainly because I could have done better. And um, yeah, the the way you beat yourself after it is 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 very is very hard and. I guess just having that support around you is, is important as well. So that's what I kind of got the, the gist of. And I thought, you know what, this song is that kind of support. So how, what would I like to hear in that situation, pretty much? And then I just kind of went off and scribbled away. <laughs> yeah. And do you want to break down like some of the lines so people can get a, a, be, a better understanding of what you're, you're saying and how it connects to the Ben Simmons yeah, situation? Yeah, for sure, for sure. This is, this is genius. Um, so I kind of started um, with the whole line, give me my respect, came into the game at number one, don't you forget, because um, Ben Simmons was number one draft pick, and I think people forget that for some reason. Um, it's very hard to be a number one draft pick, especially in America, um, and for you to come from internationally and go up there and become, play for LSU, become number one draft pick, that is not easy. So. First of all, I wanted to remind him of like, yeah, who the hell you are, firstly, you know, and and then kind of kept going. And, um, you know, Melbourne Straight to Philly, I had to represent. Um, that's why I say less when I'm dealing with the stress. Um, yeah, Ben Simmons isn't much of a talker, you know, and, and I, li I like that about his personality. He's not someone that's really overly talkative and especially on, on, on presses and, and interviews. He's very well-spoken and he just kind of keeps it nice, short and sweet. And I guess I, I feel like he dealt with the situation pretty nicely, just keeping it low. And so I just thought that line was um, was relevant to, to, to the situation. Um, then it goes into the chorus and, uh, you know, you better talk to me nice, feeling out of sight. Um, that whole chorus is just very just like when I do come back, I will come back at my best. And you have no choice but to respect my game, pretty much. Um, and that's what that whole car is, man. It's just like a G up moment. Like, I'm just trying to rile you up, you know? And um, yeah, and then the second verse was the same thing, just kind of understanding that, you know, last year I went through the pain. I told myself I'll never again. And this is me talking to myself mostly in that, in, in that aspect and just what I would tell myself when I was, I was in these positions. And I'm like, yeah, last year I went through the pain, but when I come back, I, it just won't be the same. I will be... 10 times better and it's fine. It's not even a proving to people. It's more just to prove to myself that I can overcome this. And that's what that second verse was. That one was more, I guess, personal to me. Um, but I felt like it tied in real nicely. So, you know. We'll just <laughs> <it back. laughs> oh, that's What's your favorite line out of the, the track? My favorite line? Uh, man, I think the first line, give me my respect. I think that just screams uh, authority, but also yeah, it just screams respect and just like, no, give me my respect. I am who I think I was and I will always be that person regardless of one messed up game or not, you know? So the fact that Ben Simmons is from Melbourne and you're an artist from Melbourne and he's right. made it, I mean, not just in America, but internationally on a huge level, mm -hmm. how does that inspire you? In, in just those words, you know, just being from Melbourne and then being an international superstar and to be picked for the All-Star game and to be recognized for his game, to, to, to play with the likes of Kevin Durant and be on that, on that same, same level of, um, of skill set, you know, that's, that's, that's inspiring to any Australian. Um, and to me personally, like knowing, because Ben Simmons played, you know, Danny Nome Basketball Stadium and we, we used to see him when he was much younger. Um, didn't get to speak to him though, um, but always saw him practicing and stuff like that. And there's always whispers about how great he will be. And it's just amazing to see how great he became. Um, so for me that to see it, it's like I've seen it firsthand just from point A to point B. Um, I remember just waking up and hearing, oh, Ben Simmons is number one drop. I was like, what, Ben Simmons, what, man? Um, and it's just, yeah, it's, it's surreal to me. And I, even more surreal to him, I must, I must, I must, uh, yeah. I would like I'd like to, to think, but um 
yeah, very inspiring. And it also just kind of makes me think that, you know what, as a, as a, as an ethnic person in this country as well, I really feel like I could, I could push the limits of, um, of all that and really just mount to those heights and just believe in myself, you know? Yeah. So shout out Ben Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> and so when you saw him at Dandenong, I mean, did you see him do anything kind of crazy or could you see the potential? Like, did you think, oh, this guy's an NBA player or you just like, ah, oh, this is it's Ben Simmons. Like, yeah, but because also the culture in Australia is a bit different to South Africa. So being at a basketball court, first of all, it's just like, it's just different. So <laughs> I, I was like, okay, cool. And I'm just practicing with some of the guys who I felt were good, but like you, you go into that place and you you hear whispers and it's more like oh yeah that's Ben Simmons, and um, it it kind of just makes you see someone differently, you know, especially if they're alone and they practicing and they putting in work, you're just like wow okay, we we hear and we mucking around we just we just shooting for shooting but you can tell this person takes his craft seriously so um, I think right then it was just kind of like a little f flash of of what hard work looks like for for anybody that's really chasing something and that's what I saw. Um, couldn't I couldn't see how far he could have taken the skill set. I didn't think I was in to basketball that much when I when I first came. But what I know now about the game, I'm like, yeah, it's 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 ridiculous. <laughs> it's definitely ridiculous. And what inspires you in general, like outside of basketball and music? I mean, what gives you the inspiration to wake up every morning and and go hard? Because you're one of the hardest working people I know in Melbourne, oh, particularly in the, the hip hop scene. Like, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, what inspires you to go so hard? Uh, look, I think overall the no, almighty God, uh, for sure. I think um, very religious and um, I think God has just put a plan into my life for me to do something amazing with, with the passions that he's, gave, he's given me and the, the gifts he's given me. So I'm just trying to utilize it to the to the most that I can do and and I just feel like if you've got if you've got a god given a god given gift I feel like it's one of those things that um at any person you take seriously and you you see how far your potential can take you and that's 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 how I do it and I I wake up every morning praying and and thanking him for this gift and also just applying it in everything that I do uh but family motivates me as well friends motivate me as well they belief in me motivates me my belief in myself motivates me um, and just to kind of play songs for people and then see the healing that it does through my words and through how I articulate myself and then just make them understand that me and you are just the same person. We go through the same struggles, the same pain, uh, the same heartbreaks. Um, so uh, trying to be just relatable inspires me to keep going and and yeah, overall, yeah, that's, that's about it. So I think God, family, friends and just, just anyone that really messes with my music for real. Now, going back to the, the Ben Simmons project, We Got Your Back, mate, it's about mental health, the yeah. importance of community. Yeah. Do you feel like these conversations are a little easier to speak about recently because of, you know, COVID and lockdowns? Because particularly amongst men, you know, we have a lot of problems expressing ourselves and, yeah, yeah. and, and letting people know that we are feeling down. Yeah. Do, you, do you feel like even amongst your friendship circle and your community, like people are willing to be a little more open about this subject or is it still quite a, a tough thing to say to your mates or certain people in your community like oh look I'm not I'm not feeling too good what's what's your thoughts on it I think now more than ever um, because also coming coming from South I'm going to say this a thousand times but coming from South Africa it's, mental health isn't something that's talked about a lot especially amongst African men or just amongst men in general so coming here there definitely was a shift in that and then obviously going through COVID and being raised here, going through uni here, you're like, oh, okay, right, this is something that, that's, that they take seriously. And there's so many support systems in uni and all these other things just to talk about things. And, and I think the more I grew up and the more I got in tune with music and, and expressing myself, I got to understand that, yeah, maybe we're not as tough as we think, you know, especially us men. And, and that's why the video had, had a special place in my heart as well, because it just, it spoke about something real. It didn't speak about anything that was made up. It's mental health is real. And especially after COVID, mental health is real. Um, and people go through the most and you just will never know. Um, and I've lost a, some people in the last two years due to mental health and suicide and things like that. And it's just like, yeah, you just never know. So that conversation between me and my friends is a lot more potent now. And it's more, I push for these things. And I'm like, hey, like, if you're not feeling good, man, we can talk it out for sure. 
even if you're not saying much words, we can talk it out because those things are important and just getting it out there to someone that can just listen to your pain and not try to convince you to do anything else, but just listen, that is an important thing. So, um, so yeah, I think that video just represented that us as Australians just listened and we were, we were willing to, to support you. Not say anything about it, but just support you and have your back. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I guess that's the thing that, um, you know, has been surprising for me is that a lot of people haven't wanted to take Ben Simmons' situation seriously when he's, right. you know, talked about having mental health. And right. I mean, how do you feel about that? Because I mean, that's essentially like the bigger issue, right? Like right. people don't want to take it seriously or don't tend to take it seriously if someone brings that up. Yeah. I, well, if you're a big athlete like Ben Simmons, they expect you to be something. They expect you to be perfect and made out of steel. They forget that you are a human underneath all the basketball IQ that you have. Like it's, no, this person's still a person. This person has things that affect him a certain type of way and that's just what it is. It doesn't have to affect you the same type of way, but it affects him. And if he's um, confident enough and also like bold enough to say that, that's already a big thing already. And I feel like he just spoke his truth and then didn't have to say anything after that. And that's why I, I personally respected it. And I was just like, yeah, cool. If you're going through something, you got to take a break. Do it. Do it. You know, why, why is he getting, you know, um, talked about in, in a negative manner when there's a lot of athletes who are doing that more now? You know, Naomi Osaka, Simone Biles, like all these people are taking breaks because their mental health is important. And athletes are not made out of steel. They have feelings too. So... Yeah, that's just how I see the situation. I just think he dealt with it accordingly, so, yeah. And just in the last 10 days, we've heard the news that Ben Simmons has been traded to Brooklyn. Back to Brooklyn, oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, how do you feel about that? Man, I'm so happy for him. I'm so happy for him because you, I always say to anybody, it's like if you want to do something and want to go somewhere, go to a place that wants you, you know? And, and it looks like the Brooklyn Nets wanted him and and man, he's gonna be playing with Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, like, yo, man, it, it, it doesn't get better than that, you know what I mean? And I think I think he would just suit that 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 team pretty well, I guess, and just what he brings to the team and the authority and the presence he has um, would just be a, a, a good thing, and he would just be diming, you know? Kevin, here's the ball. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a big thing for him, and I'm just happy that he's back, like, not playing basketball and the thing that you love doing and you haven't been playing for specific reasons and now you're at a point where you're like, I'm with a team that wants me. I'm with a, a franchise that wants me. Let's get it. Let's go for that ring. Let's chase that ring, baby. <laughs> bring that home, bring that home, bring that home. So hopefully that's, that, that's, what he's on, that's, that's what's on his mind. So, you know. And do you think Ben Simmons is going to be listening to come back in the, the locker room before the game. Oh, man, he better be listening to that. He better be, or we, or we fighting. Huh? <laughs> um, yeah, I hope, I, hope, I hope he does listen to it, and I hope he, he really gauges the words I'm saying, because um, really, like, in all honesty, we, wrote, we, we, we as a community wrote that whole piece of art for him, you know? So um, no one will really truly understand it as much as he would, you know? So... I hope I hope he's watching the video a couple back a couple times. I hope he's listening to the tracks and and just soaking it all in and just understanding that us as a community in Australia and Melbourne, man, we have your back, man, and we support you. So, so yeah. So I hope I hope he's yeah he's indulging in that at least six times a day. <laughs> I mean, I'll get you to introduce the song in a in a minute to the audience, but. What is coming up for Voldy? Because I know that you've got some music on the way. So Ooh, let, let the people know. If, if people want to find out more about you, Ooh, wee, what, what, you got, what, are you, um, what are you cooking? Man, so I'm just going to release my debut EP, you know, mid-2022. Mid but I've got a single coming out in a month. Um, it's called Virus. Uh, man, it's just bringing the soul back pretty much and just talking about, about things that I don't think people expect me to talk about. And... And um, yeah, just showcasing expression and, and soul music and just what I think um, resonates with a lot of people. And yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's about a relationship, but it's, it's cool. Um, and it's something that I think is, is close to my heart. I've got my sisters on there as well. Uh, we used to sing in the choir together. So um, it's just got that kind, of, that kind of feel. It's just got that feel, you know? So that's dropping first of April, April Fool's Day. Um, and yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. This year's a... It's a good year.
<laughs> and if people want to get behind you and uh, learn more about you, where's the, the best place to uh, follow you? Yeah, for sure. Hit me up on Instagram, Official underscore. Um, you find every detail about what I'm, my upcoming releases, my shows. Um, I'm planning to do more shows this year as well and just just link up and just kind of just get my music out there because it's just been slow with COVID and, and really just reintroduce myself as as the best rapper in Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to the rappers. Um, Slash the universe. Yeah, exactly. It's the takeover. It's the takeover. And I'm, I'm pretty confident in my music. So um, I just hope people can enjoy it just as much as I enjoy it for myself. So big vibes. Big vibes indeed. All right. So lastly, do you want to introduce the comeback to the audience? And The comeback is available on Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, Amazon Music. Go stream that. Um, if you want to get pumped up for a game, if you if you want to get pumped up in general, go listen to that. Um, cover cover art was designed by Onos Gold. Big ups to him, um, and it just really has that community feel to it. So go and get that streamed today, or else I'm gonna fight you. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna fight you. So um, it's a great track, I think, and um. It just screams Melbourne for real, so go go get that. Apple, Spot, Apple, Spotify, Tidal, Amazon. Yes, sir. Boom. And we're also going to put the link in the description of the, the YouTube video. So. Of course, he's probably going to chuck it right. right. <laughs> yeah, we'll put it right there. We're right there. Right there. Right there. <laughs> All right, Voldy, man. Thanks so much for coming past. Nah, thank Appreciate you so much it. for having me, man. For real, for real. Appreciate you. <laughs>